good day flight simmers we're going to be taking a look at the Viking Air Limited by de Havilland the DHC2 Beaver and we're going to make a flight from Pender Harbor which is a seaplane base taken off from the water Charlie Alpha Gulf 8 and we're going to fly to uh, Nanaimo Harbor uh, seaplane base Charlie Alpha Charlie 8. We're going to use the world map to do our flight plan. So here we are in British Columbia. It's dark right now, but I'll set the setting to daylight once we get our flight plan done. So if I zoom in here, you'll notice the icons for the um, waterway aerodromes is a little different. It's, it's a little red uh, circle in there rather than uh, the blue color and there you can see it's a seaplane base so I'm going to click on that and set as our departure and we're on water there even though it looks like there's a little runway let's go down here to Nanaimo which is on Vancouver Island across from um, Vancouver International Airport on the mainland and if we zoom in here it looks like it's inland but there's actual in the water uh, landing area so you can see where we have to land. It's right in this area here. So actually, if you look on Google Maps, you'll see that the, um, you know, the place where the planes come up and uh, pick up passengers right in this area. So I'm going to click on that for our arrival. And we've got a direct route now for flying to this location on GPS. I'm going to do instrument flight rules and you see that changes things a little bit gives us a, a couple of waypoints there and uh, the approach is going to show as automatic you know you're not going to get a runway number or an ILS uh, or nav landing so if you look at your nav log you can see uh, we're going to go to uh, 2700 feet So, a fairly short flight. We're going to hit fly now. And we can take a look inside the airplane. I find it doesn't, even if I was trying to land this on a runway, I wasn't able to get this plane to do an approach hold on a glide slope or a glide path. But it's very easy to land this plane, even on a runway, with your uh, wheels down, landing gear down. So let's hit fly right now. And a little bit dark out, so I'm just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to change the time of day, bring the sun up here. So here we go. And uh, we are going to take a look at the plane. So without getting too complicated, you have your usual gauges here, your angle of attack, your altitude gauge, your speed. So you can watch these gauges. I'm not going to get uh, too complicated on this. I'm going to try and keep it simple. There's a lot of things you can adjust, but it's very authentic. Even the sound sounds great in this plane and it looks great. It's got the little worn, you know, weathered looking dash here from hands rubbing against the finish so here's your throttle and i control that with my joystick easy enough to do uh, for the propeller i'm just going to uh, bring the rpms back a bit not a hundred percent you know uh, and um, you know i am not going to show you how to do this exactly as a real pilot it's a lot more complicated but I'm just cutting these back a bit, the fuel mixture for the flight. You can uh, add some tension to these, which is kind of a neat little feature. So it's very well done. It's got a Garmin system in it. So that's why we're able to do a flight plan. And this is great, even though um, uh, we're not going to be able to do an approach hold or IELTS landing or anything. We've got uh, a magenta flight pan path to follow. 
Uh, I'm just going to let you show you some things on this plane on the inside. Um, here we go. We got the rudder trim overhead here and the pitch. Mm, temperature gauge. So let's go down here. Now here's where we're going to find our autopilot, our heading bug. And the heading bug's good to use if you, you don't want to use the autopilot and you just want to set your bearings to follow your flight plan. Then we've got an approach, which as I said, does not really seem to work on this plane. We've got a reverse back course. Now the altitude works fine and uh, arming the vertical speed seems to work up or down. And the altitude, uh, I'm going to set that to, I think we said it was 2700 feet when we looked at uh, our nav log. So I'll set that to 2700 and we'll see if we can climb to that. Here's your uh, alternator switch, your battery. Now all this has been done for us already um, because we started from the world map. Starter engine, switch, booster pump, PTOT. So if it's cold you can put that on if you're flying in very cold weather. P-Tot heat. Um, cabin lighting. You can flick that on if you want. There's your nav lights. They're on. And your beacon lights are on. I'm just going to go outside real quick. Make sure I don't run into the shoreline here. Just going to turn a bit. The other way while we're talking. Get a look at the outside of the plane. So my joystick is controlling the rudder and the ailerons and the rudders in the water as well as you can, you can see there so I'm going to pitch up or pitch down using my joystick so I'm just cruising around here so I don't run into the shoreline on you and then we'll go back inside and just look at a few other things so this is a little wobble pump to manually increase fuel pressure we won't need to do that carburetor heat is already adjusted for us emergency cutoff this is a little cabin heat pump there and this one here is a carburetor heat um so um there's the parking brake if you're on a runway and want to do a runway takeoff just click on that put it on but we don't need it on water obviously it's not going to work um let's take a look at uh yeah i'm going to go hit another control button here that was control four Control 5, Control 6, brings up that uh, Garmin system. Control 7, Control 8. Uh, I wanted to show you this Control 8. That's your landing gear. So it's like a pump, and all you have to do is press G on your keyboard or find the, uh, if you can program that into your. Uh, so you see the gear is down now. If I hit G again, it's going to pump and bring it up and the same thing for the flaps now I have flaps uh, in my joystick so if I hit that it's going to pump pump again so you're setting your flaps at different settings so go the other way with my joystick button now you can program this into your Xbox controller or use the keyboard for that or you can actually just hit it with your mouse and uh, let's see. No, it's not going to do anything if you hit it with your mouse. Uh, let's see if I hit the left button, right button. No, no difference. Okay, so joystick and keyboard. Uh, let's go control nine. Well, there we go. Okay, now what I was going to, what I can show you here is if you do run into this situation, you can do a pushback. Shift P and uh, it'll push you back off the shore. The other thing is, if you put your landing gear down, you can actually drive right up onto like that grass on the right over there. So I'm just backing up here. So shift P, back me up. Uh, so while I was showing you the interior there, some of the nice features. Okay, so right now I'm going to go back inside and go control three. So there's your... Um, 
your frequency is automatically set for you by the system when you do a um, flight plan from the world map so if we were landing on a runway and it would automatically enter the runway frequency and you can manually enter it here by scrolling on your buttons to set your frequency and then you hit swap see this 113 I hit swap you see that's now active back okay so in order to change this from GPS to something else like VLOC and back to GPS that's how you do it so you want it on GPS for autopilot flying this plane so let's see I think that's pretty much it oh there's your flaps right there it's really cool you just hit your little flat button there to put them down for takeoff you see climb cruise takeoff landing pretty neat okay let's end this uh, push back by pressing shift P on the keyboard now I can go forward uh, one thing I forgot to show you is uh, let me uh, go down here okay there's the little thing for the rudder I'm gonna put them down by clicking on that so now I got a better response here see because I got the rudders in the water now for takeoff you want those rudders up so I got the thing on idle right now go back inside see if I can see that again so click on that with your mouse and up they come so we've got the uh, we've got the flaps down to 15 percent for takeoff let's have a look here yeah take off so let's go oh by the way one other thing i wanted to show you a lot of people talking about this and trying to find out how you close that door you can open the door which is kind of cool but how do you close it well what I finally found out is if you just accelerate, it'll close. I don't know if it's the wind blows it shut or what, but anyway, let's uh, try and get orientated here. I'm just going to turn a bit. I think we got those rudders up. And we are going to try and take off here. You can see the direction we have to go right here. So we're actually headed in the right direction right off the bat, headed south. Once you see it lifting out of the water like that, just gently pull back. So I'm going to bring the flaps up, just one. So the flaps are set for climb right now. So we want to go to 2,700 feet. And I set the altitude for that, so I'm going to go inside. And uh, go to three, control four. I'm going to turn on the autopilot, turn on the nav, and uh, I don't want to hit the altitude yet until we get there. And I'll see if it holds that altitude once we get there. So I'm pretty much on full throttle right now. Well, you can see the planes turning to follow this flight path. Which, so that's a good thing. I mean, uh, it's nice to have the autopilot if you want to just relax and enjoy some outside scenery. But what you have to keep a real close eye on is your vertical speed of this plane that you're climbing and also your altitude. I'm going to bring flaps up once we get to uh, 2700. I'm just waiting to see if it's going to settle at 2700 or whether I have to hit altitude and turn it on to do that. But I don't think that altitude's not on right now. Yeah, it's off. So let me just see what happens here. I want to see if it's going to actually stop at 2700 and turn itself on or whether I'm going to have to do that. Okay, so it's continuing to climb. 
So I'm going to hit altitude and see what happens. So that came on there, altitude. Let's see if it's holding now. Okay, so it did. So now it's holding the altitude that it actually reached. Now if I want to go down to 2700, I'm going to bring those flaps up. Uh, let's just see if I can do that. This is working okay. I'm going to hit arm, vertical speed, uh, turn off altitude. Okay, so now it's armed and it's on and vertical speed thing. So now I'm going to go down and it looks like it's going down to 2700. Let's just see what happens. Nope, it's still going up. So let's try it again. Down, down, down. Okay. It was set to go up, so I'm clicking down. So let's just see if it goes down. Now. So just watch this vertical speed gauge. And you can see we're going down now. So we want to get down to 2700 and then hit altitude. So I'm just going to see. I'm going to cut back the speed a bit. That also affects. You know, if you're going too fast, it also does affect its ability to descend. So once I did that, it's starting to go down. Let me have a look here. Inside again. I always have a little bit of issue playing around with this. Okay, let's just see. Okay, it's going down now. So I am going to try and hit the altitude button when we get to 27. So, we're following the flight plan, which is great. We're going the right way. We're heading to the Nanaimo, British Columbia. Look at the beautiful BC countryside. Vancouver Island, the mountains in the distance. Vancouver's over there. And Whistler Mountain, where all the skiing is done. That's beautifully rendered. Okay, so we took off from over here. Let's just get orientated here. So we're getting down to 2700. Let me just hit that gauge here. Turn that on. See if it levels off here. That's 28. Yeah, that's great. So I'm just about 100 uh, feet above what I want to be. I'm just going to increase my uh, throttle a bit to try and hold my altitude. You can see this gauge when I do, do the throttle, what's happening, it is messing around with it a bit. So, let me have a look here again. So basically that's how you're going to want to control it. And it's on, so I'm going to click it again. So make you can see it, it's showing it's on there. Navigation's on, and the auto on. This is still probably armed. No, it went off. Okay. Now, barometric pressure uh, will give you your proper altitude, and it's probably 2.9 or 9 or 2. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard, see if that changes. Yeah, it didn't change. So uh, it looks like it's a little of that or about that. Alright, plane's turning now. Following our flight plan. Now you can take a look at your flight plan by using this toolbar up above, bringing up this map and see what's happening here. And I'm scrolling in and out. So you can see everything's looking good. We hit that waypoint. It map. We're heading now to Senri and then into Nanaimo. So, I'm liking uh, how, well, first of all, it's a lovely plane. It flies a little faster and easier than the uh, Cub Crafters X Cub, because that's pretty slow. But the Club uh, Crafters X Club, the uh, autopilot works better when it comes to doing a uh, approach landing at an airport. 
approach hold, it'll pick up the glide slope. But I've tried this several times and I haven't been able to get it to do it. But nevertheless, this is a very easy plane to land on your own anyway. As long as you can get a flight plan and the autopilot will get you to the airport, you can, uh, you know, check the runway out and circle and land or on the water, do the same thing. So uh, it's, it's a great plane. Really fun to fly. And uh, the thing I like about it is just how realistic it looks inside. Even the sound you get uh, is obviously recorded from a real plane like this. Oh, there's your fuel selector, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Some of these things we'll see. Okay, pilot floodlight. You can turn that on to break, especially at night. And uh, nap lights are on. Cabin lighting's on. Beacon lights on. So the landing lights are on. I mean, you only need to put them on before you're going to land, I guess. Strobe lights are on. Panel lights. I can turn those on just so you can see what they look like. just makes things a little brighter. So this is the type of stuff you'd have to have on if you were doing your night flight. But you do have, you know, um, instrument flight rules here. So you could fly this thing at night. If you want to give it a try and have some fun. I don't think you'd have too much issue. There's your gauges, vertical speed. Now you can put your own uh, tail information on and it shows up inside on this little tab. And I don't know if it shows up on the outside of the plane. Not really. No. Some planes, it'll sh if you put your own uh, information, it'll show up here on the back here. It didn't. Give me a better look at the plane. Beautifully rendered. So, your landing gear is up. So these wheels will come down and the landing gear wheels will come down and you can press to show you. I'll press G. Give you an idea of what it looks like when they come down. So like I say, uh, on this plane, like I actually tried, you can in the water put the landing gear down and you can actually ride right up onto like say a boat ramp and up out of the water. Or if it's a fairly a beach or something, you could that's hard enough to sand, you can actually go right up onto the to land with your landing gear will go down in the water. But you don't want that down when you're taking off, that's for sure. It's going to create a lot of drag and make it hard for you to lift off. So, our speed's looking good. I'm going to have to keep it at that speed or I'm going to start gaining altitude. So, really, I'm not sure why, uh, once you lock that in, that it won't keep that altitude. But, nevertheless, we were able to go up and down using the vertical speed. And basically, now I'm just controlling the altitude by. Just keeping the speed nicely at uh, 70. So we're getting down now, and I'm going to try and get up. So you see, our, our vertical speed was slowly dropping while I was talking here. So, we're going to take this off and go, see if we can go up. That's on. Let's see if this plane will start going up. Yeah, it will. So it will go up, you know, so it is working to get you there. But uh, I have my speed down pretty slow and I think the plane was slowly dropping. So that's one thing you'll have to keep an eye on is your altitude with this plane. So even though I haven't increased the speed, you can see it's still going up. So um, the autopilot is probably adjusting the trim for us so that we can rise. I didn't change the flaps at all. So that's a good uh, little demonstration there of 
what you can do if you find your plane starting to slowly sink. Now once I get up to 2700, I am going to get... It's hard to see it in here at the same time. But I'm going to hit um, altitude. Well, altitude is on. Okay. So what it did is it turned off this and turned on altitude. So let's see if it's holding at 27. Yeah. It looks like it is. Uh, climbing slightly though. Alright, so I'm going to cut back on the speed. Basically it went to altitude because we reached the altitude I set. So now I'm just going to cut back a little bit so we stop going up on the throttle. Now, how close are we getting? Just going to try and get over to the other side there. I find it a little bit hard to press your keystroke buttons to get get it on this side. But anyway, nevertheless, uh, we're getting fairly close here. Now you can ring in and ring out using this little button here. I'll just zoom in a little bit there for you. So, you can take a look at your flight plan here, uh, your procedures, that's your VNAV button, messages, we're not using that for this flight, but there's a direct to button if you wanted to hit direct to and select an airport menu button, there's your calm stuff, and then another little similar uh, Garmin gauge down here, navigation screen. So, we're getting close, you can see this is where we're going to land, so we're, we're ready to hit another waypoint, this should go magenta, just going to look at our elevation here. So we're, we're holding at 27, which is great. So I'm going to fly past the, uh, the Seaway um, airport and turn around and come back and land. So, hopefully this will turn magenta, but if it doesn't, it just keeps falling, that's fine too. I got a feeling we're not quite there yet. Oh, it looks like we are actually. Oh, it just turned magenta, we can see that. Yeah, so we're like... I'm, I'm just scrolling using my mouse to get a look at this. So there we go. We're on the final leg here now. So, let's go outside and have a look. So, Okay, so here's where we're going to land in right in here, I believe. Well, actually right in here, I think. Yeah. This island here, in between this island and Nanaimo is right here. So we're going to go and swing around and come back and land in here and then see if we can find this uh, let me just show you here here's what it looks like on Google um, Maps so here's the island so what I want to try and do is swing around and come in here and land this way and then see if we can go over and it looks like there's a little entrance in here and there's where Harbor Air seaplanes are so See if we can find this. I don't know if it's uh, rendered on Microsoft or not. I mean, it depends on how good a job they did rendering this airport location. So, my altitude is holding at 26, which is good. Once we get down, we can put down the water rudders. Now, you can do that by printing pressing Control w on your keyboard or having it programmed into your joystick or your Xbox controller 
but I think the easiest way to do it is just inside the aircraft or the keyboard. So inside the aircraft, it's a little more fun to actually do some of this stuff with your mouse button inside the aircraft. It makes it seem like a little more authentic issue. So I've got to watch my speed there. It's looking pretty good. So I've got the um, you know fuel mixture and the propeller RPMs uh, set back a bit. So it, it's the aircraft sounds nice and smooth and uh, it's running better than having them both for the 100%. So we're getting really close now. So I think I'll try going down to 2,000. See what happens here. See if I can go down to 2,000. Turn off altitude, hold. That's on. See if I can do down. See what happens. We want to go down to 2,000. It doesn't always take you back to where you were. You have to use your mouse to drag. I'm just going to go down a little faster. 500. See if it will go down. It's really going down slow if at all, so. Uh, yeah, it's going down though, but not like you'd expect it to respond. Like on an Airbus, when you do something like that, it just starts dropping. 2000. That is on. The yeah, vertical speed is on. So just press it a little more, see what happens. I may have to decrease my speed a bit. Yeah, it's still showing the trim is up here. So I'm just going to cut the speed back a wee little bit. As soon as I cut the speed back, she starts to descend. Air speed's going up too, you can see. See where my engine is here. RPMs. Let's see if I go inside and change that RPMs a little bit. Let's see what happens. Propeller RPMs. If I cut that back a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, it didn't seem to make a lot of difference there. So we're descending, getting close to 2,000. So when we get to 2,000, what I'm going to do is, when we get to 2,000, I'm going to um, just increase the airspeed a bit. I like to wait and see if it levels off at 2,000 or not, because that's what we had the altitude set at, correct? So it's really slowing down. Go back inside. So I find your buttons that you uh, click on your joystick, etc., doesn't always take you back to the same view. Alrighty, uh, let's see here. Altitude set itself. So once we got there, it, it shut off. So that's great. We're flying over where we want to land. So, it, uh, I don't know if it's even rendered here.
Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Um, it would be somewhere around here. We'll go down anyway. It will be... This looks like it almost could be their best shot at doing it, or maybe even right here, but nevertheless, that's where we're headed. I do not see... I'll hold it now. It could be over here. Yeah, this might be the area that uh, they're calling. We'll go in here anyway. For the sake of the thing, we'll, we'll say this is basically where everything is. So it's obviously not rendered like it is in Google uh, Earth. It, they've done a much better job in some in more important areas than others. So let me just... Give you a better look at this. I'm gonna fly out here a little ways and turn around. So even though it's on autopilot, if you use your joystick and start moving enough, you'll take over the plane. It doesn't force you to stay on autopilot. Or you can just hit the autopilot button and take it off. So I'm going to descend now, start descending, and get ready to turn around and come back. Try and land somewhere in that area. So I'm going to take the autopilot off in order to do that. So the autopilot got us here, kept us on track all the way. So I don't want to um, get my speed up too much. So I'm going to slowly turn around here and put some flaps down. I don't drop too quickly. So I'm going to put some flaps down now for landing. Alrighty, so there's the area where we want to head for, over here I would say, somewhere actually where this waterway aerodrome is, so we're at a thousand feet now, yeah, okay, so I'm going to cut back, So you want to keep your speed, uh, you don't want to land too quickly. Try and get it down around 50 if I can. And just put some more flaps down. So you want to bring it down gently. Keep your speed down. So we're getting a warning there, a little beep that we're ready to land or that we're getting close. There we go. Now just put it down gently. There we go. Okay, so there's no brake at all. So this thing's going to slow down on its own. And put some more flaps down if you want to try and slow it down even more. Okay, so I'm going to put those, uh, I'm just going to put down the rudder. Oh, there we go, right there. So that'll allow me to turn. So, we're actually in the area of the aerodrome, where it might be, if anybody's guess. But I suspect it would be somewhere over here, according to Google Maps. So I'm just going to bring the flaps up. 
So I've got those water rudders down so I can steer a lot better. And I'm just going to try and zoom in here and see. Yeah, somewhere over here, I suspect, would be where it's at. So we're just going to go in here. So really this concludes the video on how to fly this plane from uh, Pender Harbor to Nanaimo Harbor. And if you want to stick with me, uh, fine, but thanks for joining me on this flight. I hope you picked up a few tips on how to fly this thing. I'm just going to go over here and assume that this is that little uh, place where the seaplanes come in. And also, we can put the landing gear down for you. I'll show you that you actually can drive this thing right up on top of the... Now, I don't know what's over here. Yeah. Right here. Let's just assume this is the area where the seaplane normally goes. So I'm going to put the landing gear down now. Just for the fun of it. You wouldn't do this. I don't know if you could do this in real life. I suppose if you had the proper ramp and everything. But the landing gear should be down now. So let's just see if we can drive right up onto the land here. It's nice and smooth looking. So Yeah, see? You can go right up on here. And let your passengers out. Now, like I said, you can do a pushback to get off of here by Shift P on your keyboard. So, let me just go inside, put the parking brake on. Um, oh, parking brake on. Okay. So, let's open the door. Boom. And you can also open the door on the other side. And let's go outside and have a look at the plane. There we go. Thanks for joining me. A fun plane to fly, no doubt about it. Now, if you want to do a pushback, you can shut everything off inside, of course. But if you want to do a pushback, you have to um, take the